everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which are my summer book recommendations. So I have a lot of very different recommendations for this coming summer. If you are someone who likes to read seasonally, like I am. I hope you enjoy some of these books if you end up picking them up. Let me know if you do pick them up this summer and I would love to discuss them with you. Otherwise, let me know if you've also read them down in the comments below. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I've got historical fiction recommendations, I've got contemporary recommendations, I have fantasy recommendations, and I have author recommendations. Basically of anything by this author I think is a great summer read. So that- oh, I also have romance recommendations. So I have a lot of recommendations for you, so definitely stick around to hear them all. And let's just get started with the video, yeah? So let's start with the historical fiction recommendation that I have. So this is one that I read quite recently and oh, it hit me. Um, that is The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetys. So this is actually my first Ruta Sepetys book and it takes place during the Spanish Civil War and I believe around the 40s. You are following two main characters, one who is this Spanish woman who is working and just really trying to keep her family afloat, keep them all out of trouble, especially since they lost their parents due to the Civil War and everything like that. So they're really cautious and just trying to get by without causing much attention to themselves. Our other main character was born and raised in Texas, but his mother is from Spain and he enters in this photography competition and goes to Spain to try and capture the real Spain for this photography competition. It is a romantic historical fiction, but it is definitely also a very interesting take with lots going on in this and it's really just sweet and yeah, I just think with the warm temperatures of Spain, I believe this also happens in the summer in Spain, so if you like historical fiction and haven't read this one or if you like Rudis Petty's, and you haven't read this one, I would recommend picking it up this summer. It was definitely a page turner for me, even though it's fairly sizable. Next, let's get into the author recommendations. So I have two authors where I think reading pretty much any of their books is good during the summer for different reasons. So the first one is fairly obvious, and that's anything by Emily Henry. I'm holding up Beach Read because Beach Read is probably still my favorite of Emily Henry's so far. I mean, I've really enjoyed everything she has put out, and they are definitely all perfect summer reads. They're all taking place during summer, during warm weather, during vacations, things like that. So they're all definitely great summer books. I just am partial to beach reads specifically. Um, and then Millie Henry does have a new book coming out, Happy Places, or that just came out. So if you are caught up with Emily Henry, make sure you've read that one as well. But if you are looking for a good beach or summer read, Anything by this author will get you there. Otherwise, anything by Trisha Levenseller, I think is another amazing summer read author. Uh, so Trisha Levenseller writes a lot of fantasy. She has one like dark fantasy romance, but I don't quite know what it is. I've loved all of Trisha Levenseller's books, like Daughter of the Pirate King, perfect summer romance because you know, it's pirates. This one was very summery to me because of the warm, like, foresty weather that they were in, and her other duology had a lot of warm aspects to it, so I just think, yeah, there's there are different elements in every single one of her books that make them, like, good summer fantasies. Now, the contemporary recommendations I have, I have two very different contemporary recommendations. The first one is The Summer Job by Lizzie Dent. Summer is literally in the title of this one. You have your main character whose friend was offered this amazing job in Scotland as a wine, fancy wine person at this inn, and her friend turns it down to run away to Italy with some guy. So our down on her luck main character decides that she will go in her place, except she really doesn't know that much about wine. So you know, chaos ensues, summer happens, summer romance summer wine tastings. It's, it's great. I, I very much enjoyed this one. The other one is quite different, and I don't think it's really classified as contemporary. It's just kind of literature, um, and that is The Bandit Queens by Barini Shroff. 
and this takes place in India and basically our main character is part of this group of women who are trying to start their own businesses and they have kind of been given this loan to do so except our main character her husband disappeared don't know where he is doesn't care to know where he is she is just fine on her own thank you very much but when one of the other ladies in this group comes up to her and asks her to do to her husband what our main character did to hers wink 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 our main character is like wait hold up no I, I i didn't do anything i didn't do that but i can help it's very mischievous kind of secretive um and i just had a blast with this one it's just a fun standalone that i think is just a fun one to read now let's get into some of the fantasy books that I think would be great to pick up during the summer if you haven't picked them up already. So first would be Spice Road by Maya Ibrahim. So this is like a desert vibe fantasy. It has some Middle East aspects in it, uh, which were really fun and with the hot climate in the book and the drinking of hot tea is very traditional to do in a lot of places because it helps you feel cool when you kind of sweat yourself from the heat of the tea as well as the heat of outside. Makes sense. So really any desert vibe book I think is great to pick up during summer. So if you're looking for a new one and you haven't picked this one up yet, definitely do so. Now traveling back to South Asia, another good one to pick up would be uh, Monsters Born and Made and this is by Tanvi Berwa. And this is a South Asian inspired fantasy and it reads very Hunger Game-esque. Our main character has a younger sister who is sick and her family cannot afford the medicine they need for her younger sister. However, their family business is raising these creatures that are used in this like tournament competition thing that happens in the upper class for the elite and et cetera and so forth. So our main character decides that she is going to enter in this race and she is going to win it so that she can help her younger sister. The reason this is so summery to me, other than it being like a standalone, is the fact that the creatures that they hunt for to breed and raise for this race are water creatures as well as land creatures. So, you know, you kind of have some like island vibes a little bit here. I think this would be another good standalone island fantasy to pick up. And finally, I would recommend This Vicious Grace, and this is by Emily Feed. The second book will be coming out later this year, but this, I think, just looking at the cover gives me summer vibes with the plant and the fruit and everything, but also it's very, it's a very Italian fantasy. It kind of takes place in a not Italy, but basically Italy kind of fantasy world-ish and just with the warm culture and the heat of the environment and the friendliness, it seems very summery to me. Our main character basically can't be touched or she can't touch anyone because she will most likely kill them. However, she is supposed to find the one person that she can touch because by doing so, she can amplify their power. And that's important because every once in a while, there are these like, demon creatures that come and try and wipe out all of humanity and so they need her and whoever she can amplify their power to defend them yeah very fun also great romance in here bodyguard romance so if that is your trope here you go go ahead take it except don't because this is my copy get your own copy now on to the last genre for this video romance I've got two romance recommendations here, one that is perfect for summer and one that I think would be good to read during summer as well. So the one that I think is perfect for summer is of course My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. So this is like a very smutty little romance novella and it's, I mean, you're on summer vacation. How is that not perfect? Our main character who is a young teacher, she teaches like third graders or something, uh, goes on vacation with her brother in Cape Cod, but finds a dead body in their Airbnb. And so someone calls a bounty hunter to come and figure out who did this, why, etc., and so forth. And so this is very much grumpy, sunshine, summer romance, and I loved it. I, I thought it was amazing. So if that's your vibe, 
And then the final book is the first part in a like romance companion trilogy that I'm working my way through. So that is The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. Now the reason that this seems like a summary romance to me is because our main characters are both working for this company. One is the heir as part as a partial heir of the company and the other just like works for the company. She's very creative. And the company is like Disney-esque where it's this huge company that has like a theme park and it has media, film, like it's this huge multimedia company. And in this book, we're really focusing on the theme park aspect of it, of like designing rides and coming up with new characters and parades and things like that to host for people who are going there kind of over the summer. I feel like summer is like the best time and really the most when people go to theme parks like Disneyland, Disney World, or Six Flags, or Michigan's Adventure, Cedar Point, you know, things like that. And so warm weather for that, it brings back a lot of nostalgic memories. And so this is just a very smutty romance of that. So the book itself is very, very romance focused, but I, th I think it's a good summer romance. And then you've got two more books to read with it, so. Those are all of my recommendations. Thank you all very much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any recommendations for me or if you have any like summer vibe books that you are wanting to get to. I also have bookish social media linked down below so you can follow me and some more of my bookish adventures there. Uh, make sure you subscribe because I am posting one video a month over the course of summer and hit the bell to be notified when that video goes up. Until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading!